Well, tourism got a carry-on full of cash in today's budget, but industry leaders say it's nothing compared to what's needed to keep them afloat. The $400 million Tourism Recovery Fund includes a domestic tourism campaign, a programme to advise businesses, and funding to identify and protect strategic tourism attractions. There will also be a task force to come up with ideas for future tourism in New Zealand. But will any of these initiatives make up for the fact that our borders are going to be closed for a very long time? Well, joining me now is the Tourism Minister, Calvin Davis. Good evening, Minister. Um, we've been talking to a person in the industry and others, and they've described, well, one of them describes the budget as a crock and say you're not up for the job. What's your response to that? Look, I refute that claim. Um, this government moved quickly to put in place the wage subsidies, tax provisions and loan schemes, all of which the tourism sector has been eligible for, and that was tens of billions of dollars, and the uh, tourism sector would have uh, used uh, many billions of that. And so we listened to what they had to say. Their uh, number one concern was the extension of the wage subsidy scheme. Uh, we've listened to that. We've extended the wage subsidy scheme for eight more weeks, and uh, that will be a help to employers, uh, and that will save jobs. But the $400 million uh, that is uh, that we've announced is just... Uh, start. The, the Minister of Finance has said that this is the next wave of support uh, for the tourism sector. Uh, the $400 million goes to a tourism sector recovery plan, which I've split into two parts. Uh, the first part is around tourism transitions, and that's to provide uh, advice and guidance to uh, tourism businesses who need to uh, transition and pivot towards the domestic market to help them with the upcoming um, uh, trans-Tasman tourism uh, scene, to help them to hibernate if they need to, or to provide uh, advice on other options to them. OK. The, uh, well, there's the a lot in there, part. Minister. I just want to address that bit first. There's, there's a lot in there. Hibernation doesn't help you pay the bills, and that's what these operators are saying, and that they are having to lay off staff because the wage subsidy extension is simply not enough. Two months is not enough. So they are saying while the borders are closed, they need you to push it out much further. What consideration was given to going six months, say, with the wage subsidy? So we considered a, a whole heap of things, and this is where Cabinet has landed. But uh, we have to be honest that we can't uh, tie workers to jobs that will not be there in the future. And businesses uh, will have to make some more tough decisions into the future. Uh, but what we're doing is offering advice and guidance to those who believe that they can manage uh, for a while this uh, we won't have the same tourism industry that we had previously, but we will have the bones of it and we'll come out stronger on the other side. What's your forecasting telling you about how many businesses in tourism are going to go under? Uh, we know that uh, there will be something like 150,000 jobs lost across the economy. Um, but this but tourism? The extension of the way... The extension of the wage subsidy will help support and uh, will prevent some job losses. But like I say, um, we won't be able to save every business and every job in tourism. The operators are also telling us that the domestic tourism just simply isn't enough to keep them afloat. For a lot of them, it's 20 per cent or zero of their business. So where is the new money going to come, uh, come to them in the money go round if it's only Kiwis travelling? Well, the, the first thing everyone has to remember is that this is a global issue and it's, it wasn't the government's desire to close borders or other countries' desire to uh, close borders, but this has been um, forced upon every country in the world. And, uh, you know, if people were looking for uh, us to open borders tomorrow, well, this package just simply, simply won't do that. Uh, they, we have to be realistic and be able to uh, pivot to the domestic market, the numbers of visitors will be softer, but uh, you know, if anyone is holding or crossing their fingers and waiting for borders to open, we honestly don't know when that could be. So they must prepare their business for a domestic market. So the International Air Transport Association is forecasting 2023 for a return to open borders and overseas travel. Is is that what you're thinking? 2023 before we get people freely flowing over our borders again? Look, it is way too soon to be making predictions about when borders will be uh, reopened. You must be working within border. some kind of time frame, though, in order to make these decisions. So what is the premise you are working on with the borders? How long are you planning on them being closed at this stage? 
Lisa, you've got to realise that there are other countries involved as well. We cannot open our borders uh, and no one else is able to fly around uh, the world. So this comes down to actually the global response to uh, COVID-19. And this is not the, the government um, imposing our border controls in isolation. In terms of uh, travel domestically, how are people supposed to get places? There are limited flights at the moment, high cancellations, and social distancing, as you would appreciate, has stopped one of our biggest bus companies from operating at level two. Are you going to try and get them an exemption for social distancing on planes and on buses? Look, we're um, expecting to ease into domestic tourism. Uh, people will uh, have to make do with what is uh, what is available. We can't force businesses to um, to make changes to their to their business. They have to uh, follow the guidelines to make sure uh, that first and foremost we operate in a safe uh, way that maintains the health of of customers. I had somebody say to me that they think that the um, Chatham Islands uh, airlines should have. Uh, you know, an exemption and allow more people on that flight. And my response was, well, what that operator is then saying is that they're prepared to risk the health of 600 people on the Chatham Islands so that uh, they can make a profit. And that, to me, is unacceptable. What is this idea about strategic tourism assets, a protection program that you've announced? So you're going to ident identify attractions that are critical to our branding and protect them. Like what and how? So a strategic tourism asset is uh, a business that has positive spin-off effects to their community or maybe to their region. And if I can, can you give, give us an, an actual example, example? Yeah, that'd be great. An example is uh, just north of Whangarei. Uh, tens of thousands of visitors would pour into a little um, village called Tutukaka, where the tourism operator would uh, take boatloads of people out to the Paul Knights uh, Marine Reserve where they could swim in pristine waters amongst millions of fish. Now, when that business does well, it has a spin-off effects, positive flow-on effects to the cafe next door that does well or to the local dairy or the fishing charter or the um, service station up the road. And we need to make sure that we can um, protect these strategic assets uh, and officials will work, will work with them to develop bespoke solutions for those particular businesses. So you're talking about picking winners and funding them? Well, if they, um, if they have uh, exhausted all the um, private sector options available to them, or well, then we will work with, um, with uh, specific operators to uh, create bespoke solutions. But what, if we don't, uh, support those um, those strategic tourism assets, well then what they'll have is an effect to other regions. So if you take something like Kaikoura Whale Watch, Kaikoura Whale Watch actually brings uh, tourists to Kaikoura and if it wasn't there, then it would have a, a huge impact and a flow-on effect to the whole Kaikoura uh, area and we would see more job losses. Appreciate your time. Thank you. That is Tourism Minister Calvin Davis there.